This is the ITV Lunchtime News with Alistair Stewart. Good afternoon. As President Obama tucks into lunch at Windsor Castle, the appetizer he wrote, published as he landed last night, has caused severe political indigestion. He said Americans had shed blood in Europe in two world wars to protect freedom and build a better world. Britain, he wrote, should remain a part of that. Boris Johnson accused him of hypocrisy, suggesting Mr Obama was consigning Britain to a loss of freedoms the US would never accept. But an exclusive ITV News poll suggests you think the president's views are irrelevant and he should keep them to himself. Political correspondent Lewis Vaughan Jones reports. The US president knows how to make an entrance and even before he stepped foot on the lawns of Windsor Castle, he'd already entered the EU referendum debate. His hosts this afternoon, the Queen and Prince Philip, he's here for a private lunch. But publicly, he's made it clear he thinks Britain should remain in the EU. In an article for The Telegraph, the President wrote, The European Union doesn't moderate British influence, it magnifies it. A strong Europe is not a threat to Britain's global leadership, it enhances Britain's global leadership. The United States sees how your powerful voice in Europe ensures that Europe takes a strong stance in the world and keeps the EU open, outward-looking and closely linked to its allies on the other side of the Atlantic. The Mayor of London says he always welcomes the President's views, but on this issue, Obama is wrong. It is very odd, it is perverse, it is hypocritical right, for us to be told by America to, to uh, embroil ourselves ever more deeply in a structure which would be absolutely alien to American tradition. A new Comrades poll for ITV News shows half of British adults said he shouldn't say publicly whether he thinks it would be best for Britain to remain in or leave the EU, while 36% say that he should. A former ambassador to Washington and Remain supporter says intervention like this is normal. He is sticking up for American interests, that's true, but he's also sticking up for common US-UK interests, uh, the common interest in advancing the values that we have in common, openness, transparency, democracy, free trade. Now, so this room is full of mirrors. Where do you, where do you oh, want to Where would you like to just... The visit here is to mark the Queen's 90th birthday. Politics not part of the proceedings. But later this afternoon, we're expecting to hear more of his views on the EU. They will be welcomed by the government, but those on the other side of the debate may not be smiling. Lewis Vaughan-Jones, ITV News, Westminster. And our political correspondent, Romilly Weeks, is live where that is going to be happening shortly, number 10 Downing Street. So, Mr Cameron and Mr Obama will meet just where you are fairly shortly. What's on the agenda for those talks, Romilly? Well, it's clear from what the president has already set out in the papers this morning that he's not going to be stepping delicately around the issue of Europe. He's going to be setting out his views in as bold and bold a way as Mr Cameron could possibly hope, and in a way that has already infuriated Leave campaigners who believe that it is tantamount to telling British voters how to vote. Could it be decisive, a decisive intervention in the way Number 10 might wish? Well, probably not decisive, but not unimportant either. Our poll showed that a minority, 30% of voters here believe that what the president has to say is important to them, but he is the biggest figure in a growing list of world and other leaders from the IMF to the leaders of China, of India, of Canada, who say that it is better for Britain to stay in Europe. And the government certainly will be ho hoping that that's going to hold some sway. Romilly, thank you very much. Well, the president's visit has made the headlines for his interventions in the debate on Europe. But part of the reason for the trip is also to see the Queen and wish her a happy belated birthday, as you saw in Lewis's report. She, of course, celebrated her 90th birthday yesterday. Let's cross live now to Paul Davis, who's outside Windsor Castle. And what we saw in those pictures, I think, already is something you well know. This is a genuinely warm relationship. I think it is. I think it's a real warmth, way beyond what's required in the, in the line of duty. I think that's fair to say. What is happening right now is that the Queen and Prince Philip, the President and First Lady, are tucking into 
a most convivial lunch. We saw when the Queen welcomed her guests here in the castle that she, she was in particularly relaxed form. She's known 16, not 16, she has known 12 different presidents. And there have been some different personalities in amongst that lot. Some she's appreciated more than others. But I don't think there's ever been quite the bond that she seems to have with the Obamas. As Romilly told us, from here, the president goes on to Downing Street for serious business. But tonight, another royal occasion. The president and first lady will be meeting up with the young royals, William, Kate and Harry. And you can bet Michelle Obama is looking forward to that. Paul, thanks very much. And as Paul just mentioned there, the Queen's reign has indeed seen a dozen presidents. You can see pictures of her meetings with them over the decades at itv.com forward slash news.